This is the Practical Homeopathy Podcast, episode number 120. Hi, this is Joette Calabrese. My Practical Homeopathy is transforming lives all over the globe by offering health freedom. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, but I say a podcast is priceless. I want you to hear in their own words how regular people just like you have reshaped their lives using the practical protocols I teach in my practical homeopathy. So with the help of my reporter, Kate, I bring you this podcast series featuring interviews with moms, dads, teens, healthcare practitioners, and Academy of Practical Homeopathy students from all walks of life. With education, you can follow in these students' footsteps. You can eliminate your fear of illness and injury by learning how to care for yourself and your family. Like them, you can be in control without acquiescing to authority to live healthier, more autonomous lives. Indeed, you too can heal yourself and your family through my brand of homeopathy, practical homeopathy. Want to hear about some amazing homeopathy success stories, how to become a cool kid who knows about homeopathy, understand what the Academy of Practical Homeopathy is, or maybe what it looks like to create a thriving homeopathy consulting business, or even just how to help those around you and those you love, this is the podcast for you. We've got a lot to cover today with a very special guest, so let's get started. Today's guest is Leanne Burns. She's a physical therapist, a homeopath, a homeschool mom, and embodies all things adventure. So everyone, help me welcome Leanne to the podcast. Hi, Kate. Hi. It's so great to be with you today. We have a ton to talk about, and I know you and I could talk for hours and hours, but we won't do that to the listeners today. But we're going to pack a lot in this 20 to 30 minutes that we have together. And I would love for the listeners to get to know a little bit about you before we begin. Tell us about some of your adventures, Leanne. Oh, boy. I still like to get out in the outdoors. I've always been an outdoors person, so I like to ski. I like to paddleboard, but prefer to kayak. I'm a little bit faster on the kayak than the paddleboard. I boat, I hike, I walk every day. I just like to be outside. And a lot of things come to me when I'm outside. So. I've found some animals in distress when I'm out there, and I've been able to help them. Also, I just, I hike a lot with my family, so I'm always carrying remedies and always prepared for whatever comes at us. And in fact, I remember one class that we had in the academy. I don't remember if it was a mastery or academy, but you were actually rock climbing, and you joined us for one of our classes, our our live lessons, and that was pretty fun. Do you remember that? (laughs) <laughs> I do remember that. That is that is another thing I do. I I actually my son's a big rock climber and um has been doing camps every summer and last year we did something different. We went as a family and he took a couple of friends and the guide said, "Hey, I'll throw you in. Why don't you do it too?" So I got to do it for the first time on real rocks and not in a climbing gym and other than that I hike on rocks and climb around on them, but I've never been roped in and being belayed. So it was kind of fun. I got to belay my son and he got to belay me on the rocks. And uh, it was great. Yeah, great fun. That was commitment, Leanne, to join a class. (laughs) (laughs) You know, anyone who has an excuse there, I don't think that there is one because you joined rock climbing. (laughs) (laughs) So let's hear a little bit about your homeopathy journey. You've been, um, you've known about homeopathy for a little while, but you really became entrenched in the last few years. So tell us about that. Yeah. So in 2017, my son came downstairs and we were two days away from going skiing. And he was in probably second grade, I think it was. And he came down all dressed in his clothes for school, his backpack on. He says, mom, I just threw up and have diarrhea. I'm like, holy cow, what am I going to do? You know, A friend of mine who is an acupuncturist and dabbles in homeopathy and Chinese medicine, she said, anytime something like that happens, call me. I called her. She said, meet me at your clinic. I have the remedy for you. And I got there and she had a little bottle. It had Ars 30C on it. It was a water dose. 
She just give it, you know, tap it 10 times and give it to him under the tongue and see what happens. Of course, his first question was, is it going to taste? And I said, no, it's just water. He took it and he never got sick again. Went on our trip. Everything was great. I'm like, huh, what's in that? You know? And she said, you need to get a kit. So I got a kit and I started reading on it and I just got, wow, this is complex. You know, how do I know? There's so many remedies for flu and this. And I was working full time and running my business full time. And I'm like, it collected dust for a couple of years until I got attacked by sumac. Poison sumac is no joke. After about 1100 milligrams of prednisone, I reached out to my friend again. She tried, we tried a couple of things, homeopathy, and she referred me to a classical homeopath. And I hadn't slept in three weeks. And I, I was still itching my entire body because, of course, when I washed the original insult, I took that scrubby that I washed it off on my hand with oh, and I went no. all over my body. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so I was pretty miserable. And of course, you can't sleep on steroids either because they just you could read seven books in a week on uh, <laughs> steroids. And so I was itching or as my brain was going. And so she took my case and recommended sulfur 30. Of course, it was classical. So it was, you know, she wanted it in water. She had me do it one dose and then wait, which I was in a hurry. But I actually, you know, had a pretty significant, probably 40 percent difference that night that day. And then two days later, she split that dose and I took a tablespoon out of that and made another water remedy. And that was all she wrote. By the weekend, I was sleeping through the night. When things changed in 2020 and my son's STEM class got shifted out, I received a timely email from Joette and I had gotten on her list. I didn't really realize it, but when I was in my panic about the sumac, I had gotten on her mailing list and I had this ton of emails. I'm like, I, I got to get rid of these emails. And I was going through them and the new one came in and it was the cool kids. I'm like, my homeschooling son, his STEM class got shut down, you know, due to the pandemic and the fears and so forth. So I said, well, let's do something science. Let's do something applicable to today and that he could use in his lifetime. So I just did it alongside of him. And I couldn't believe it. It was all I had looked for going from classical to practical. It was like, this is what I wanted. I wanted recipes. I wanted a way to be very efficient and effective. That's how I work in physical therapy. That's how I've worked my entire life. That's how I work in my house. I want to be efficient and effective. It just blew me away, the Banerjee's. When I first got the Banerjee book, I'm like, huh, I guess this is good to have on the shelf. I'm not sure if I'll use a lot of it, but you know, I have it. And <laughs> that thing is falling apart. Like <laughs> I've had to re-glue the, the binding of it. So um, from there, I did the pain course, and that was kind of a catalyst because I like to think things out and talk things out. So I already had patients that as I'm listening to the remedies that Joette's describing in the pain course, I'm like, that's so-and-so, and that's so-and-so, and that's so-and-so, you know, doesn't like riding on a bumpy road, you know, oh, it feels lame. You know, I had Ruta and I had, you know, Belladonna, I had all these things that were just coming to mind when, and I was writing their names next to all these remedies. And then I talked to them and I could talk out those remedies and learn it a lot better. I also did something that I don't know that everybody does. I actually did the recommended reading and classes that she had. She had the intro to homeopathy and so forth. And I found that very fascinating. That actually helped in the academy because I'd already had the exposure to that. Mm -hmm. And hopefully Wednesday, I'll get to go to the Samuel Hahnemann monument in Washington, D.C. Oh, taken. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's kind of where I went. After I found some of those protocols and the Banerjee protocol for the flu that was going around, I started getting some people asking questions of me. Somebody had a, a bit of a miracle. They were able to sleep without any medications after about 12 years by way of having the flu and then us talking about other things. She put a Facebook post out there and then all of a sudden I was getting calls and <laughs> messages and, and everything. I said, how I, I can't handle this volume. You know, I want to help all these people. That's when I did the intro to homeopathy classes in the community. And I did two of them. One was for general people and then one was for healthcare providers and massage therapists and chiros and things like that. That really did something unexpected. 
I didn't expect it to take, I mean, I was just basically here, this is how you use Joette's website. Here's how you use practical homeopathy. Here's what it is. Here's how to use it. She has these great things, these great recipes. And if you really want to, you can take her gateway courses and learn more. After that happened, all of a sudden, classes started popping up everywhere in about a tri-county region. And then more classes and more classes and more classes. And all of a sudden, we had this big community of people wanting to know more about homeopathy and really seeing the value. After that, you were teaching people how to help other people. And then you wanted to learn more at that point, or what were the next steps? Well, I did. It's kind of funny because I wanted to teach them so that I wouldn't have all of the responsibility. Yeah. And like, I don't want to do this. You know, I don't want to be a homeopath. And all of a sudden I'm like, yes, you do want to be a homeopath. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like it, every everything was directed. It all came together. It was just, you know, such a time as this. As a believer, I feel that it was directed spiritually as well. Um, the people that I needed in my life, they just were right there. Everything just came. It was very fluid. It happened kind of organically. I listened to every single podcast that Joette had. I'd do it when I was gardening. I'd do it when I was out walking. I'd do it all over. Then she would always mention something about the academy. We're working on the academy. We're working on something big, you know, on and on and on. I said, I've got to do this. So I applied for the first cohort in and got accepted and started in September of 2021 and then graduated in 2022, which by the way, 22 is my favorite number. It was my <laughs> number. And I used to play basketball. I was a pretty good basketball player, believe it or not. And that was my number. My dad's baseball number was two. My grandma was born on the 22nd of February. So it was really, it's always been a number for me. And it was kind of funny that I graduated in 2022. Yeah. And you did something else in 2022 as well. Yeah. I started a business. <laughs> yes, a couple, really. Uh, yeah, too. I, so through the Academy and some of Joette's employees there, Laura actually spurred me. She said, you need to start taking some cases. Where I live in rural North Carolina, we don't have a lot of remedies around. So it's hard to find things. You, can't, you can get a 200 potency at certain places in Arnica, but that's it. And they don't sell a lot of variety. So I said, well, I need to start a remedy shop. So I had the space available in my clinic, separated that out into an LLC. So I have an LLC taking up space in my main business, but they're totally separate. And so I have a shop and I started taking some cases. I was still in the academy. So I had a lot of studying, a lot of, there was a lot of coursework each week. And I was homeschooling my son. And yeah, I'm running yeah. several businesses and <laughs> yes. And getting outside, doing all the fun stuff that, cause I, I have to get outside. I have to ground myself. I really need that. I'm a very active person. I don't sit still a lot, but getting outside really just connects me, connects me to God, connects me to earth, nature. I just, it's part of me. So opened that remedy shop, started taking cases and I saw how well those were going. And, you know, I only took a few and it was good because I could get the mechanics of it down. It wasn't that different than physical therapy and the charting was a little bit different, but you know, really I got my feet wet and then I could, you know, kind of get my rhythm. Graduated then in the fall, became a study group advisor right after that. That's for the next academy class. You worked with the study groups and helped them to get through their academy year. That was fun. And it was another way of integrating and just really immersing myself. And you know, they'd ask me good questions. I like to be asked those questions because I like to solidify the knowledge and I like to be able to articulate it also. So that was really mm -hmm. good and good and good to listen to them. I learned things from them as well. Mm -hmm. You know, just like in physical therapy, you never stop learning. Right. You know, if, if I don't learn something new each week, something happened, something was wrong. You and you hear, you hear the information a little bit differently each time too, and pick up different things than you did last time. Sure. And you know, that's a good point because even in any type of learning, the more senses that you have involved in that, if you hear it, you smell it, you, you know, uh, write it, you uh, see it, you know, any of your senses, the more senses you have involved in that learning, the better it gets integrated into your brain. And so when I'd hear it, like you said, from different people explained a little bit differently or using a different analogy or using it in a different way, it really helped. So at that same time, you began to be a study group advisor for the next academy class. 
And then a few months later, you went right on into our mastery program. I did. That was really good. I can't say enough good things about that. Smaller groups, just a different level. When I think about it, I think about the academy is giving you the the base and the foundation. It's a stepping up and stepping off point where you can, you know, you get a good basic knowledge of homeopathy and the remedies, but then you get to fill in all the gaps and you get to integrate it and apply at a different level and mastery. And it really was, I, I, I just loved it. I loved the people in it. I loved having that access with Joette and good conversations back and forth. It was very valuable. And then you didn't want to leave us all. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I went into mastermind. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, yeah. Once, you know, when you've been with all these people and, you know, then it narrows down and you get closer and tighter groups, it, it really is hard. You miss them. I mean, masterminds every couple of weeks now and it's kind of like I need my group fix I need I need to be talking with these people and you know, we have a signal group now so that's kind of good but it is different and I find it fascinating to hear how all the people that have gone through all three years or are in the midst of mastermind how their lives have really changed it's pretty incredible I love transformational it. yeah mm -hmm. yeah very so now that you've gone on this homeopathy journey, I would love to hear about some of your success stories. I know you have a, a couple that we talked about a little earlier that you could share with people just to give them an idea of some of the things that they could do with homeopathy. Sure. So one of my favorite stories is the dog with the rattlesnake bite. We have every poisonous snake that's found in America, North America, here in North Carolina and the Eastern Diamondback, they get to be very, very big, five feet long, six feet long, and so forth. I've seen a few of them myself. My neighbor once, when I had my farm, brought one and said, look in the back of my truck. And I looked back there, and my daughter was young at the time, and she says, don't let your daughter go near that ditch. You know, and I'm like, I, oh, I won't. Wow. So, I mean, it was probably three and a half, four inches in diameter. It was huge. I got a phone call. I was actually on vacation. It's a year ago in the end of April. And I was actually taking my boat to get serviced. And I got a phone call. And I know this person doesn't call me unless there's a problem. Set a stoplight. And uh, I said, I need to just call her because I certainly can't text when you're driving. And I called her and she told me that her dog had been bitten by a rattlesnake about 20, 30 minutes ago. What should she do? And I said, what do you have? And so she had Arnica at the house. Of course, she didn't have a lot of things. I said, can you get him in the car? I'm about the same distance on the other side of the clinic as you are to my clinic. So we met at the clinic. She got there a little bit ahead of me and had gone in. She didn't have one of the remedies. So she, I had told her what remedy to get. She went in and got it and she started right away. Again, using all of the things that I found in the survivalist, I had the one that she needed in the car and she started everything. And I got there we just kept taking turns, giving the dog remedies every five minutes or so because it, he was starting to fade. As soon as she got there and started some of the remedies, he'd kind of perked up a little bit, but he would sometimes lean back and just kind of close his eyes. And we got him going. And by that night, he was up moving with the kids. And the next morning, he was playing ball. Wow, that's really fast. It is fast. He was limping a little bit with the ball, but by the next day, and he runs fast. They live on a kind of a community farm. Of some family members and cousins have a community barn and chickens and all of that. And then they, their house is on the outskirts of it. And they have a long gravel driveway. And the dog runs with the car all the way down the driveway when they're leaving or coming back and so forth. And the husband had taken a picture of the dog running the mm. next day, going pretty fast with the car. So wow. not limping the, at that point in time. So Yeah. Yeah. And tell us a couple more. That's that's spectacular. But I know you have some more to share. I have an interesting one, a teen who has a diagnosis that we often see as something that can't be treated very well. It's cystic fibrosis. He is a special case. He has been taking the protocol, the Banerjee protocol, and doing really, really well. And he finally got some blood work done. And the doctors looked at him and said, you must be taking that medicine. And I won't name it because I don't want to um, here. But they immediately thought that he was taking this big gun that combines three medicines together. 
And he said, no, all of his blood work and his nasal swabs were perfect. He then went on another remedy because of some allergies and so forth to dust and animals and so forth. And for the first time, I think in his life, from what his mom said, he's actually blowing his nose. He's actually getting drainage that he can blow out and not just have to rinse. So there's just some great things happening. He's grown significantly, put on about 20 pounds. It's pretty amazing to watch and to be a part of. And I, again, it's not me. It's the it's the remedies. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but you had to learn about them. So I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they, they you know they never cease to to amaze me. Um, Absolutely, yes. I, I've had so many things. I had a woman that came to me with a three year history of eczema, and her hands were just very cracked and itchy and red. Nothing could help her. She tried about everything. She took the gateway class. and That's how she heard about me. And so she did the protocol for eczema for about eight weeks, and there was absolutely no change. And this is a great example of how I do like to have in-person cases. She actually had come to me in person, and she was wearing shorts. And then she told me about how she's a lot itchier around the full moon, and that she had these ringworm-like things come up. But I know it's not ringworm because it's it's not a fungus. And they were very itchy and she had some marks on her legs and so forth. And my first response was, have you had a dog? Do you know she actually had the homesteads, but do you have a dog growing up? Do you know, and it turns out that she had spent some time overseas and so forth. And she was a homesteader and had goats and dogs and all sorts of different things. And we were going to go with the parasite protocol, but she was a little hesitant. She wanted to try the second line of the eczema protocol. And within a day and a half, she was calling me. And she's like, she was, again, full moon, full bore. She couldn't sleep, anything. So we started her on the parasite protocol. And within, I'd say, a day and a half, she was able to feel a difference. Then she started sleeping through the night. And then within two weeks, her skin was looking good. It's now several months later and her hands are normal. Wow. And she is so happy. One of the things that she said to me was pretty interesting because it's sort of like when you look at a thermometer and the temperature rises and the bulb and the red goes up. Mm -hmm. And she said, it's like the itchiness on her body is all going down towards the ankle. So everything from the waist up is good. And actually down just to the knees and in the feet. So mm-hmm. it's just gone down from the top down. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, skin things can take a long time to heal too. So I feel like that's a really good yeah, response. It's been about 16 weeks, four, four months. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's thankful, I'm sure. That she yeah. is. That she <laughs> is. Sounds miserable. Uh, anything else that you want to share for success stories? I can't tell you about... A fun one, too, because this was where the gateway classes and the people that took them really came into play. I had a young mom on a military base. I was actually hiking in the mountains. I think it was when I was doing, no, it was the year before that, the rock climbing. We were hiking and so forth. And I got a phone call from somebody in town and they said, do you have the remedy for blood clots at your clinic and your shop? And I said, yeah. It's always in supply there. This person had been diagnosed with blood clots in their legs and was a military spouse, went on base, had it diagnosed, and they prescribed some medicines. And when she went to get the medicines at the pharmacy on base, they were out of stock and she didn't have any resources. So she reached out into the community. A couple of ladies got together and got the remedies to her. Four weeks later, She went in and the doctor said, well, did you take the prescription? And she said, no, I couldn't get it. It was out of stock. She goes, what? She goes, you should have been taking it because they're to thin your blood. You know, they're not going to change the blood clot. They can't dissolve it, but they'll make the blood go around it. She didn't tell her that she was taking homeopathy. I think she told the sonographer. She said, we'll just do another Doppler and we'll look at these. So she went down, had the same conversation with the person doing the Doppler. When they did the Doppler the clots were completely absent, dissolved, gone. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) 
what a testimony. Yeah. And what the doctor said was, well, whatever you're doing, keep doing. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like that's what they always say. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's great. That was the same with cystic fibrosis case. Whatever you're doing, keep doing. (laughs) Isn't it exciting, Leanne, to hear? I mean, you must hear these stories every day. I do. Mm -hmm. It keeps you addicted. You know, I'm a lot like Joette in that way, is that the more you see, the more you want to help, the more you want to do, because you just get addicted to seeing people thrive and get better Mm -hmm. and have that response. It's kind of hard to explain. Yeah. Now, I bet some of the listeners are thinking, That's great, Leanne. You've had all this school and you've had this experience and you know how to do these things. But how in the world do I know how to help people? What would you say to those people who are really wanting to do this and and help others or help their families, but they are maybe where you were, you know, four years ago or, you know, that you didn't have all this knowledge? What would you say to them? Start. (laughs) When I started using it myself and helping people in the community use it, I had actually gotten protocols for allopathy, protocols for a naturopathic, like, you know, how can you treat things without a prescription medicine so you can have all these vitamins? And that was about two and a half pages long. And I was like, wow, how can anybody take all of that? (laughs) You know, and then I got the little protocol of the Banerjee's and it was like six things and you don't have to use everything. But at any rate, I started, I just said, well, Let's give it a whirl. And people were just so happy and responding so well. You just start using it. And you have to develop that community. From that, I started developing a community of people close to me. And they started taking the gateway classes. And then they started creating more groups from those. If two people out of their group then did gateway groups, then two more people from that. It was just like a big tree, a Christmas tree of gateway groups and leaders. You know, it's really nice, especially when you live in a rural area to have people in different camps. Can you get a remedy to such and such? Can you, you know, just the willingness of those people and the the excitement because they started using it with their families and seeing how it blessed them and and worked with them. It kept them autonomous. They didn't have to go anywhere. They didn't have to get a prescription. They started feeling comfortable with their families and then other people and their neighbors. It just spreads. It really spreads. Mm -hmm. So you said just start, just start somewhere. Doesn't matter where right? Yeah. Just No, start with those closest to you. Start in your family. Start with yourself. Mm-hmm. Pick something simple and see what happens. Yeah. And we'll put a link for the Gateway to Homeopathy study guides so that those of you who are listening and wondering what that is, you can find that resource. So I want to ask you, I try to ask people that I'm talking mm-hmm. to, what is your favorite remedy and why? Do I have to pick just one? I know. <laughs> if you were stuck on a desert island. <laughs> oh, no, that's different. See, that would be a different Sen- remedy, right? That, that, that might be our Seneca. <laughs> Me too. That's <laughs> because it's I like would. Yes. a Swiss army knife. But yes, but. yes that's what I always say. But, but okay, let's just say what you're loving right now. Okay. Well, as you know, and a lot of people know, I'm the Kibaracho queen. So I really like that remedy. Can you spell um, that for the listeners? Yeah, Q-U-E-B-R-A-C-H-O. I think sometimes it's K Braco. Okay. You know. And Joette did talk about that on mm-hmm. um, the last podcast. So we'll put a link to that as well if people want to learn more about that. But why are you loving that remedy? I've seen some miracles with it in a mother tincture. I've seen some miracles with it in potency. I know of two specific cases, well, three actually, that I kept one person out of the hospital. I got two other people out of the hospital with it and really took them out of danger, I should say. I like to use it paired. I have a dynamic duo, the Nadja and Kibaracho, and that's just what I like to use. Mm -hmm. I don't leave home without those two. Those two, (laughs) it's aconitum and those two, right? (laughs) (laughs) The don't leave home without it list. Yeah. Okay, good. Typically, what type of conditions do you use that for? Typically, upper respiratory symptoms and yeah, okay. shortness of breath. And I think Joette mentioned that in her podcast. So that's mm-hmm. good. Yeah. All right. I think we've covered a lot. So as we close today, Leanne, what would you like to share with the listeners? Well, I'd like to share that when I started this journey, I was enmeshed in a medical system that really was limited and wasn't working well. The outcomes were disappointing. 
and oftentimes created side effects. And now through immersion in homeopathy, I have a lot more freedom. And this system of medicine is unlimited, accessible, and curative. And if I could share, I didn't go on that journey or get on that track right away. I started by listening to podcasts and studying. I listened to every single one of Joette's podcasts. And I think that if one were to start there and to hear those stories, those stories would be so powerful that they'd integrate these medicines into their daily lives. And from there, just go on to Gateway and Gateway 1 and 2 and see where it takes you. Great advice, Leanne. Thank you so much for sharing your story and your journey and words of encouragement. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good to see you, Kate. These podcasts focus on students of practical homeopathy who have learned how to take care of themselves, family, friends, clients, pets, patients, and even livestock using homeopathic medicine. I hope listening to this podcast has inspired you to follow in their footsteps. But this podcast is only a start. It's critical that you learn how to use these homeopathic medicines properly. So peruse joettslearningcenter.com to find fun study group opportunities and in-depth courses developed by subject. With the proper training, you can join the tens of thousands of students before you in developing the confidence and competence to protect the health of your family and loved ones with my brand of homeopathy. Practical homeopathy. You just listened to a podcast from internationally acclaimed homeopath, public speaker, and author, the founder of the Academy of Practical Homeopathy, Joette Calabrese. Joette's podcasts are available on all your favorite podcast apps. To learn more and find out if homeopathy is a good fit for your health strategy, visit practicalhomeopathy.com.